How much do you think the UK bonus pool will be this year? It's uh, not possible for us to estimate it accurately at the moment because the decisions have not been made by the uh, boards uh, of the major banks. But we have set new rules and principles for bonus setting <coughs> beg your pardon, in the United Kingdom, which are far more stringent than anywhere else in the world. Yeah, you've got the bonus tax as well, the uh, sort of 50% tax on the bonuses over 25,000. You you didn't, I think, when it was introduced, expect it to raise that much money. It was sort of half a billion pounds. But I think most of the reports suggest it's going to raise a, a lot more than that now. Do you, is that your expectation? Well, the central expectation was that the bonus tax would have an impact on banks' decisions about the quantum of bonus. And interestingly, on Friday, J.P. Morgan Chase said that the UK bank tax had affected their global allocation allocation of bonuses. So it is having an impact. But how much will be raised will depend on how much the banks and their shareholders agree to pay in bonuses. Those decisions are not being made yet, and I'm hoping that the shareholders in particular will be making their representations uh, to the banks to say we don't expect to see unwarranted or unjustified bonus payments. But you would rather the banks didn't pay big bonuses, even though that means you're not going to get all the money from this super tax. Yes, um, we want to see the banks retain capital to support new lending, to uh, provide the much-needed support as we move into economic recovery for British families and British businesses uh, as we look forward to economic growth in 2010-11. Don't you think the government's taken... I know, I know you say you've taken tougher measures than anywhere in the world on this, but uh, the banks are getting away with blue murder on this, aren't they? I mean, you, at the moment, as I understand it, we're ensuring the liabilities of most of these institutions implicitly or explicitly, we aren't charging them for that. Wouldn't that taxpayer have a first claim on any excess profits the banks are making rather than the staff that the banks themselves? Well, let's be clear. Firstly, as far as Royal Bank of Scotland and Lloyds are concerned, the two principal banks in which the taxpayer has an investment, there will be no cash bonuses for anybody earning more than £39,000 a year. Bonuses will be deferred and they will be subject to very stringent clawback arrangements in the event that the performance of the bank deteriorates. This goes beyond anything which has been agreed and established in the world in respect of bonuses for 2009. That said, uh, investment banks have had an exceptionally strong uh, performance year in 2009, but it's almost entirely been down to the action of, of central banks exactly. and governments. And in those circumstances, uh, we expect the remuneration committees of these boards, who are the final arbiters, to look very carefully at what drove the profits and how much should be rewarded for talent and how much should be retained to support lending for the future. Why don't you just get far, far tougher than you are, though? I mean, you're, I know as you say it's, you, you're, you've been tough and it's more stringent than anything there has been before, but there, there needs to be a complete changing of the game, doesn't there, when it comes to this? I mean, just the, the economics profession outside the city is taking a far tougher line on what needs to be done than the the government here, or the, certainly more than the economists in the city, of course, but I mean, it just does seem as though there's a real reluctance to to do something that completely changes the bonus culture in the city. Well, Evan, we've gone further than any other country in the world. We have imposed the G20 principles on bonuses in respect to 2009. We were the first to introduce a special tax on bonuses. The French have followed that. The Americans, who now have their own particular problems because their TARP scheme will suffer significant losses. Right. But we you, expect you to make have a profit. ruled out, in, in an interview on, on Saturday in the Scotsman, Alistair Darling did rule out following the US down the line of, for example, charging an insurance premium to the, uh, the major banks and institutions in order to claw back something from them for the implicit subsidy they get from taxpayers. Well, we want to promote a, a global debate about this. Uh, Gordon Brown made a very good speech at the G20 finance ministers meeting in St Andrews in November, which we then followed up in the Treasury with the publication of a document setting out a number of ways in which the implicit guarantee could be internalised by the banks through a transaction tax uh, or through some form of um, a deposit uh, levy. So it's not, now, ruled, out, a, not ruled out that we will have such a charge, because the Conservatives say they would like there to be a global deal on a charge for banks and you 
it, it would seem as though you were taking a much softer line than the Americans, but in fact you're saying it's all still to play for. Well, we're having a seminar at number 11 in a fortnight's time with people from the IMF, the World Bank. All G7 countries will be uh, present. I'm hosting that seminar. It's a full-day event. We're looking at the very broad principles because these are areas, Evan, where we have to work uh, as part of an internationally coordinated response because we do not want to disadvantage the UK in an industry, banking and financial services, in which we have global leadership. Paul Miners, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.